How are you guys doing today? I'm having a lovely day. I was just uh, prepping. I got I got a roll of spruce trees. There's three of them. They're starting to die off. The uh, I think it's the pine beetle has really uh, just destroyed it. I'm gonna open up my uh, my tree line to the west, and we'll fall those trees. They're not very big, but uh, we'll fall those trees before they come down. Uh, I was just cleaning up with this unit here, and uh, it's a nice little power saw. I think this thing's going to need a carb kit, but it, it, I mean, it starts and idles and runs. It's got a little bit of a bobble off idle, but thank you, Jeff. This thing's cool. She's light, and she sounds just right. I think the 200T uh, is not going to spend too much time uh, being run this year. I'm going to play with that. Okay, you guys have been asking about the CS59 Timberwolf. Um, I wanted to do this saw for several reasons. One, um, a lot of you guys, uh, a lot of you guys are, are landowners like myself, and and maybe maybe a maybe a big saw is not what you need, or or you know maybe a, a lot of you guys email me and you say, Tid man, there's not a lot of professional saws here. I feel your pain. Um, here on the prairies, there's not a lot of big timber, and there hasn't been a lot of logging in my area in a long time. So, um, you do find big saws north of me, but uh, that's, you know, it could be a six-hour round drive to go look at a saw, a round-trip drive. So, uh, I hear you guys. So, I thought to myself, a uh, buddy from Texas, Caleb, asked me if I'd have a look-see at this saw. Um... He was looking for something uh, a little bigger than a 50cc saw, but smaller than, you know, the 70 plus cc saws that he runs. Um, this is his girlfriend's saw. Uh, she cuts with him. Uh, he has a, a tree company in Texas. And uh, so I thought, sure, send it. A um, lot of interest in this saw. A lot of interest. It's a nice saw. I haven't put it to wood yet. Next time we go cutting, I would like to run this stock before we do anything to it. Um, I want to see how the saw runs and give you guys my thoughts on it. Um, just from the little bit of starting and running I've done with it, it I noticed it's quite rich on top and it, it sounded to me like it has a limited coil. Um, he did do a muffler mod on this saw. She's, uh, she's wide open, he said. It sounds good. I'm probably going to leave this saw how it is. Um, I don't know though. When I pull the muffler off, I'll have a look. So what I did was instead of instead of just jumping right into this project, I wanted to I wanted to build the best saw for them that I could. So I did some studying and some research, and it turns out that these saws have a semi-fixed hijack, meaning you can't really lean them out all the way. Um, when you pour a power saw, she's got more pull, right? You, you're it'll just, it'll physically pull more fuel out of the carburetor because you have increased intake timing, etc. right? And the little go-fast tricks that we use, um, that helps promote airflow through the motor. Um, so, basically, I, I want this thing to pull decent RPM. Um, I can't do that with a semi-fixed carburetor. The second thing is, is this saw, like most new saws, has a rev-limited carburetor. I don't know what it's limited to, but um, rev limited carburetors, my, my 461 still has one on it. I never changed it. Uh, that thing cuts in the middle ovens with, uh, with a 25 inch bar on it. Um, no problems, but um, I bet you if I turned that saw up a little bit more, it would probably bounce off the rev limiter a lot in the cut. Um, Caleb wants something that's just easy to tune and, you know, something that he can just grab a screwdriver and tune or, or Taylor can tune. So, um, I, uh, I phoned him and said, hey, um, maybe we should put an unlimited ignition and a, and a non-fixed carburetor on this thing. So what we did was, I'm going to open this up. I just got this in the mail yesterday or the day before. Let's open this up. And, uh, sorry, I didn't pre-open this. Um, they, I told them, because I'm in Canada, parts can be really expensive up here and hard to get. So, I, I said maybe you guys could order the parts and, uh, send them to me. So, that's what I was waiting for. You guys were asking. Okay. 
and uh, here they are. So we can start this build right away. Uh, they ordered these from Saw again. So there you guys go. If you're looking for Echo parts, um, I have been on their website. Okay. Little invoice there. I'm going to keep all the paperwork with this for them. In case there's any problems down the road, I'll mail I'll mail their their parts back to them and the invoice if they so need. Okay. So we have a. Let's see what we got here. This is probably going to be the ignition. Okay. We have a blue fixed or non rev limited ignition. Okay. There's your part number. This is off of a 620 Echo. Now the difference between this and a 620, um, I think a 620 doesn't have the plastic side cover, but it is more or less the same saw. From my research, again, uh, I'm a jack of all and a master of none, guys. I, I don't specialize in any one brand, so um, if I make any mistakes in any of my videos, it's not. I'm not doing it uh, intentionally. I'm just. Uh, I'm not always in the know, folks. Okay, and they ordered, they ordered a non-fixed Walvoro. I'll show you guys the part numbers in case you guys want to do this to your 590. Okay, this is for a 620 also. Now, in case you got some carburetors laying around, uh, I'm going to open this. Where's my knife? Here, here's a knife. I'm going to open this real quick and uh, there we'll try not to knock fucking saw over here. This is a Walvoro HDA. It is a 316 HDA. Let's see if you guys can see that. I'll turn the light on. Again, I like to share info with you guys. Let's see if this thing's going to do that. Okay, turn this off. Okay, so basically the deal is, is that we're going to or unlimit this saw, okay? This saw out of the box, they, it's, it's, they do that now. They build it in a way that, uh, and I mean, I guess from the manufacturer's standpoint, it kind of makes sense. If you have a farm and ranch saw, and and I mean, these are nice saws. I might actually get one for myself. Just, you know, these are very common where I live. <coughs> Ooh, I got sawdust. I was cutting trees there. Anyhow, these are very common where I live. Very, very common saw. But I guess the idea is, if these are being sold to the average fella or lady, you know, and... Uh, they try and make it so that you can't burn the saw up. Um, these modern saws tend to be a little bit lean. And uh, so right there, it's like they set them up so that you can't lean them out. Okay. So that's the idea behind that. You can't over rev the saw and you can't turn it too lean. I'm curious. Let's, uh, let's grab, let's grab one of these. Here, I'm going to bring you guys in closer. Let's see the difference in the carburetors if the numbers are different. I'm just curious. Okay, you guys can see me here. What a beautiful day. The birds are back. You can probably hear them chirping. I got the doors open. What a nice day. Beautiful day to be alive. Um, these are the days where you can just wander around and it's... Uh, These are days that I'm just like, man, am I blessed to live here. Are we blessed, my wife and I. Okay, we got a choke ski here. Where's my tuning screwdriver? I had it in my pocket. Right here. Okay. Oh, there we go. Okay. We're not going to go too deep into this. So this thing has been in the wood once. I think he sent me a video. Of them running this saw and uh, that's about it and then they packaged it up okay so this is an 
I need reading glasses soon, folks. This is an HDA, but it is a 268 HDA. Okay, and what did I say this one is? This is a 316. Let's see. Because I'm interested. I, again, guys, I just got these parts. I have no idea. Uh, this carb looks very similar to the 670 Echo we just built. Um, very similar. Oh, yeah. Okay, I got to get this on video, folks. Okay. Can you guys see the difference? Look how small the old carb is. I'm going to zoom you guys in here. Okay, here. Substantially. Okay, there. You see the difference? This carb is substantially larger. Okay. Interesting, isn't it? Okay, I'm going to put this away. We're not quite ready to start this build yet. I'm going to... Um, if I can't run it, sorry, I'm going to turn the light off here. If I can't run this saw soon, it just depends on the weather. It's uh, it's real, real muddy where I cut right now. And uh, so that has to be taken into consideration. Okay, I'm going to put this thing back together. Again, hook the, hook the choke rod into there. And then this little grommet just holds it in place. We'll put the card back on. See if I can do this and look like a pro. <laughs> Believe me, guys, uh, I fumble with stuff as as often, or probably more than you guys do. Uh, so don't worry. If you're making videos and you're fumbling, that's okay. Um, you'd be surprised how many people out there fumble also, and. Uh, the more you do it, the easier it gets, right? How's it going, Mac131? I've been watching him lately. I, I like what he's doing. He's learning and growing, and uh, it's neat to see. And uh, that's what this is about, folks. Um, old school knowledge being passed and shared amongst all of us. It's not just me. It's not just me or Buckin or Harvey sharing. You guys share things with us, and... Um, we learn a lot from you guys and it, it's, it's neat, you know, just cause we're in front of the camera doesn't mean, uh, that we're the ones with all the knowledge. You guys teach me stuff all the time. Um, having a YouTube channel has been an invaluable resource, um, to myself. And I'm going to say that. Okay. Let's see what we can see on this coil. <laughs> turning sorry guys let's just do this I want to see what the part numbers are different on the coil maybe you guys have a different coil or or whatever right um I so really I think the difference between the 630 and this or 620 and this saw I'm gonna bring you guys in a little closer here is the uh is the carb and the ignition I bet yeah I don't know how different the price is um like, I don't know if if you were going to buy one of these, is it worth doing this swap? Now, um, I think, uh, I mean, Caleb already has this saw, so he's in it to win it, right? But, um, you, you guys know what I'm saying. Um, it, I don't know if it's cheaper to just buy a 620. Uh, here, you can buy these on sale for about 600 bucks, 550 I've seen them. Uh, the 620, I priced one out. Now, it did have a full wrap on it, which, again, would be nice in a saw like this. The 620 was like $400 to $500 more than this saw. So, I don't know I don't know if I would even buy the 620 because, for the price of that, I can get the 562. And you guys know how much I like my 562. Can the Tin Man get the recoil off? Oh. Note to self, take all the bolts out. <laughs> oh, guys, I laugh at myself probably more than you laugh at me. 
Okay, here we go. There we go. Okay. I'm not sure. I'm going to pause this for a second, folks. I don't want to break somebody else's saw. Okay, folks, there's another bolt down here. Here, I'll show you guys. I like to show you guys everything. And it's nice because I get emails all the time. You guys go, hey, thanks for that shot. You know what, guys? I watched YouTube for a lot of years, and I try and be cognizant of what do I want to see as a viewer. Now, so, sometimes that may differ from what other people want to see, but um, if I could show you guys where that missing screw is or whatever, um, I think that's a good deal. Again, I don't even know if I have to take this top cover off, but it, it seems that... Okay, so I'm going to undo this bolt here. I want to show you guys exactly what I'm doing so that if you're working on your own saw, and I'm sure a lot of you are yelling, you have to take that out. Oh, there we go. Beauty. Okay. I got you. Okay, that makes sense. So I didn't have to take apart all these extra. Okay, so you pull pull the recoil off, and then, or pull the chain brake assembly off, and then the recoil comes off. Well, wow, that looks very Husqvarna-like, doesn't it? I think so. Okay, I'm just going to screw these down. Again, I don't want to lose any fasteners. Because I'm not quite at the point where I want to take this whole saw apart. Okay, so this... Yeah, guys, see? Well, let's just keep going. We're dedicated now, aren't we? Let's see, what does it take to take this thing apart? Not saying this is a difficult saw to work on. I've just never touched one before. They are common, but I've never I've never had one of these on my bench. I've looked at them. There we go. I've looked at them. I've attempted to run them or attempted to buy them used. A lot of times these things are pretty haggard around here. This is a saw that like construction companies buy and they just they cut railroad ties and stuff. Okay. I might edit some of that out. I might not. Who knows? Okay, so from what I could see, this has an 83 GD. This is a 91 GD. Uh, A10049 or 1303 on the new one. The old one is 10036-2002. I don't know what any of that means, but 91 GD, 83 GD. So... They are definitely different part numbers, and again, this is a 620. Okay, so uh, next time you guys see this saw, hopefully I will be running it in some wood. I'm not even sure what bar mount this takes. And uh, here, I'm just going to move you guys back. I'm not sure what bar mount this takes. What bar mount does this take, folks? Um, if you guys know, please, uh, please put a comment in there. Again, because I don't know everything. <laughs> I always say this guys, I know just enough to be dangerous sometimes, uh, I, I know what I know, and I'm always, always win willing to uh, ask, hey, what do you guys know, because that's the thing, there's a lot of you guys out there that know your stuff, and uh, you guys help me all the time, and I appreciate that, okay, I'm just going to quickly cinch these down and uh, we have a power saw. Okay, we got the saw all back together. Uh, this was a little fiddly for me to put on. But yeah, there's a, there's a metal, there's like a little metal clip that goes behind on this side and then there's two grommets and, and, and two bolts. It's kind of, it's, it's, it's kind of normal, like you, once you guys start looking at it, you'll notice right away that it's uh, pretty intuitive how to put it together, but it was just, took me a few seconds. I just got to do the last bolt here. Okay, so that's what we're up to. And uh, hopefully next time you guys see this, we'll put it in some wood. It'll probably just be a quick little video and I'll, just for me, I want to experience what these things are all about. 
Uh, I gotta figure out what size or what type of bar and chain. I'll probably just throw a 20 on this, just a regular size bar and uh, run her a little bit and see what the deal is. Um, and then we'll do this saw on the channel. And this is exciting. Again, why not? Um, why not do a saw that a lot of you have? As soon as this came on the channel, you guys were like, yeah, I have one of those. Well, let's do it. Um, I like to, I like to do, I like to do saws that you guys are interested in. Cause honestly guys, I like most saws. Um, I just enjoy working on power saws and it's cool that you guys like coming and hanging out in the shop. So, um, that's what we're going to do. Uh, thank you everybody that helps out the channel by being here. Um, that's the only help that I need and uh, I appreciate you guys. It, it's funny uh, how many of you guys are, I'll get emails, sorry I can't help more. It's like, help is help. It don't matter what kind of help. I'm going to, guys, the, the thumbs up, the thumbs down, the, the, the comments, the emails, um, it feels good, guys. So uh, I don't take any of it lightly. Time is our only non-renewable resource, and you guys give me your time, and I don't take that lightly. Anyhow... As always, thanks for watching. Take her easy. Stay tuned. We'll have this going very soon. Later.